Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So to commemorate my channel turning one year old, I thought I'd create a little video and I'm putting together all of the top five videos that are the most viewed on my channel. You loved them so much so I thought I'd put them all together to commemorate this momentous occasion of my channel turning one year old. I hope you enjoy, so let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, drama and secrets. So a while ago I did a video that was called What Happened to These Former Drag Race Judges and you all seem to enjoy this video and there were several comments asking what happened to Todrick Hall who was also a judge on Drag Race. So here you go, this is what happened to Todrick Hall. Please make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for my future videos. So Todrick Hall is a choreographer, singer-songwriter and YouTuber who rose to fame after competing on the show American Idol in 2009. His career took off from there and he has since appeared in several musicals such as Kinky Boots and Chicago and has also become a successful YouTuber. Todrick first appeared on RuPaul's Drag Race as a guest judge on the Season 8 Episode 6 challenge, which was the Wizard of Oz Makeover Challenge. Since then, Todrick has appeared several times as a guest judge on Drag Race and also a choreographer on the show, and he appeared in Season 8, All Stars 2, Season 9, All Stars 3, Season 10, All Stars 4, Season 11, and All Stars 5. Todrick has also collaborated with several of the Drag Race stars, such as Trixie Mattel, Shangela, Bob the Drag Queen, and even RuPaul. Since appearing on American Idol and Drag Race, Todrick's career really took off, and he now has over 3.5 million subscribers on YouTube. However, in the past few years, Todrick has been the subject of a lot of controversy, and his career seems to have been affected as a result of this. A lot of this controversy came from Todrick's controversial appearance on the Celebrity Big Brother in 2022, but I'll talk a bit more about this specific part later in the video. This controversy may be why Todrick has not appeared on Drag Race since All Stars 5 in 2019, but this is not confirmed. Since 2019, Todrick has been accused by several of his former dancers and collaborators that they were not paid for the work they did for Todrick. These allegations have been going on for some time, and even Drag Race alumni Manila Luzon has also accused Todrick of non-payment. On Twitter, Manila once replied to one of Todrick's tweets, saying, quote, Well, you still owe me for hosting your Halloween party since last year. So dot dot dot. Todrick has since denied this and he even talked about this on the Celebrity Big Brother and Todrick even went as far to call Manila Luzon a quote horrible person. In 2020, Todrick became involved in some more drama after a Facebook user under the name of Hodrick Tall commented on an article about season 10 winner Aquaria, basically saying that women should create their own show if women or trans contestants want to appear on Drag Race. And this comment was seen as being anti-trans or misogynistic, and Aquaria actually responded to this by saying, quote, looks like I'm getting my own show, sorry for being annoying baby, but you know what's worse? Misogyny. Just to make it clear though, it's not been confirmed whether this Facebook account under the name of Hodrick Tall is actually a real account by Todrick Hall or whether it's just a fan account. Many people believe that this is Todrick's personal Facebook account, but this has not been verified. However, this drama, whether it's true or not, has only just added some controversy to what was already surrounding Todrick and his career. The real controversy for Todrick, though, started in 2022 when Todrick appeared on season 3 of Celebrity Big Brother. Todrick made several unusual and also offensive comments throughout his time on Celebrity Big Brother that were not very well received by the audience or even his fellow contestants. So here are just a couple of examples of things that happened on the Celebrity Big Brother. 
One example was when Todrick was talking to a fellow contestant, Lamar Odom, and um, Lamar told Todrick about a friend of his who had been shot to death. And then Todrick gave a sort of weird response, saying that killing someone and shooting them dead is sort of quick and doesn't really make them suffer. And if you wanted to make someone suffer, it would be, quote, better to torture that person than just kill them by shooting them, which only takes two seconds thinking that like if they're trying to get revenge on that person like shooting them out of nowhere and killing them only really affects their family it doesn't they're gone in two seconds can be better to torture that person that you didn't like if you wanted to get at them and whether todrick really meant for this to be offensive it's unclear but obviously this was quite a weird comment and insensitive comment and a lot of people thought that this was quite offensive another example was when todrick was talking about cameo for anyone that doesn't know, Cameo is a service where you can pay a celebrity and they will create a personalised video message for you. The problem was that Todrick started talking about Cameo and basically said that he charges different prices and sometimes it can be hundreds of dollars and other times it can just be tens of dollars. Well, how much did you charge? I charge different rates, like throughout, like sometimes it's $150 and mm -hmm. sometimes it's $25. It oh, just wow. depends on how I feel that day, how much energy I have. Todrick also went on to say that he always uses the same scripted uh, message for his personalized videos and he never changes it because he does so many of them. I don't make it too personalized because I do so many of them, mm -hmm. so many thousands of them. And I literally say that exact same thing. Oh, okay. Every time. Yeah. The problem was that the way Todrick was saying it kind of sounded a bit dismissive, as if he doesn't really care about his fans and doing these cameo videos. And it's just basically like a money grab for him. And also, I think this kind of angered people because he basically insinuated that he just charges whatever he wants and some people may pay a lot more than others even though they're getting the same thing. And then another example came during an argument with fellow contestant Shanna Mokler. Shanna had previously told a story about when her home was invaded and someone broke in and apparently the, um, the person who broke in tapped on her window and said, quote, don't be too hard on me. Shanna then went on to say that this incident was the most terrifying and traumatising experience of her life. But then later on, on Celebrity Big Brother, Todrick and Shanna got into an argument about something unrelated. And as Shanna walked off, Todrick said, Don't worry, Todrick, I'll get the jury to vote against you. Don't be too hard on me now. And this was taken as a direct reference to the story that Shanna had previously told about this terrifying home invasion. And people were angry and thought that it was really insensitive of Todrick to bring up such a traumatising event to someone and effectively quote back a line that a home invader had said to her. And as I mentioned earlier, Todrick um, and Manila had some beef where um, basically Manila Luzon was accusing Todrick of not paying her for a Halloween party that she hosted for Todrick. On Celebrity Big Brother, Todrick talked about this, although he didn't say Manila's name specifically, it was obvious who he was talking about. And he basically went as far to call Manila a liar um, and basically said that this Halloween party never existed and that he wouldn't need a drag queen to help him sell tickets to a show. She was like, we well, still haven't paid me from this Halloween party that I hosted last year. And I was like infuriated because I don't throw parties. It's not something that I've ever done. That's not a part of my like brand. Like I'm not a party or whatever. And he even then at the end called Manila a quote, horrible person. She, like the fact that she did that just made me really honestly feel like she was a horrible person. And the last example came when Todrick was talking about a fellow contestant, Chris Kirkpatrick, who had just been evicted from the house. Todrick and Chris had had several arguments throughout the show, so it was obvious that they had a not so great relationship. However, after Chris was evicted from the house, Todrick started talking about Chris and his family, and he even brought Chris's son into it, and sort of started, he started talking as if he was Chris's son. Oh, you are a traitor. You betrayed us. And I was like, and your son, when he sees this, is not going to be proud of you. Like, 
you said you wanted to be a good example for your wife and your son. You have embarrassed them. And if your son saw this, he would be like, you you betrayed your team, daddy. <laughs> and many people felt that Todrick shouldn't have brought in Chris's four-year-old son into the conversation and sort of imitating him. And they felt that this was kind of a low blow and quite insulting to bring someone's children into an argument that had nothing to do with the child. Carson Kresley, who also appeared with Todrick on Drag Race and was also a contestant on The Celebrity Big Brother with Todrick, um, during the show, Todrick convinced Carson as well, some, as well as some other contestants who they should evict from the house and basically manipulated Carson into thinking that some things were true about contestants that actually weren't true. And later in an interview, Carson was asked about this and Carson actually said that he was surprised by Todrick's behaviour behavior on the show and didn't realize that Todrick would play the game so quote aggressively. Um, jury management is going to be a disaster for Todrick because it sounds I haven't seen it but it sounds like he said disparaging things about everybody and just played in a very very um, aggressive way. And he basically said that he trusted the wrong people during his time on the show which was kind of him saying that he shouldn't really have trusted Todrick. And we trusted the absolute wrong people yeah. um, and disappointing uh, because I had known Todrick outside of this show for a long time working on other shows. And um, I just felt like he wouldn't have uh, tried to do us that that hard. And Todrick didn't seem to have been perceived very well by his other fellow contestants either. Uh, the way it works on Celeb to Big Brother is that a jury of housemates votes for who they think should win in the finale. And during the finale, it was between Todrick and fellow contestant Misha Tate. And Misha actually won with by a landslide with seven votes to one. So only one person voted for Todrick to win. And this is basically assumed that many of the contestants had not been very happy with Todrick's behaviour throughout the competition. And some of them even made some kind of sly digs about Todrick, although they never necessarily said his name, but it was clear that they were talking about Todrick. One of your favourite movies is Wizard of Oz, but you've forgotten that we could see behind the curtain. So I'm going to choose the, less, the lesser of two evils. The one thing that this vote ensures is that I will not ever have to hear your voice again. Everything was great up until I saw the live feeds. I hope you realize that playing this game and winning is definitely doing it a good way and not talking bad about people that are already gone. And since the finale, Todrick cancelled all press appearances, although normally these are obligatory. Uh, Todrick has also been the subject of other controversy since um, Celebrity Big Brother, including a lawsuit which was filed against him. It all started with a video that Todrick posted to his YouTube channel in February 2021 titled Bought My Dream Home Full Tour. In the video, Todrick is, shows us around a lavish five bedroom mansion in Los Angeles that he said that he bought. Although Todrick never states how much he paid for it, the property had apparently been on the market previously for just under $6 million. The video resembles the MTV show Cribs, and Todrick walks around the house and shows us all of the different features, such as, for example, an infinity pool, as well as a custom-made Louis Vuitton bed. However, there were several things that didn't add up in the video. For example, Todrick kept mentioning his Amazon housewarming registry, which is effectively a Amazon wish list of gifts for you to buy for his housewarming. And some of the things on the list, for example, um, were plastic disposable portion cups and dish detergent and paper towels. So a lot of people were confused why Todrick would have these kinds of things on his gift registry if he can afford a $6 million house. And then there were several rumours and comments left on the video which claimed that Todrick was actually renting this house and he hadn't actually bought it, even though the whole video, the point of it, was that he had bought this house. And these rumours appear to be true because in April 2022, a lawsuit was filed by Avi and Orna Lavian, who are the apparent owners of this house. 
Apparently, Todrick had rented this house and agreed to pay $30,000 per month, but had not paid in the months of February and March of 2022. So, the owners issued Todrick with a notice in March 2022 to leave the property and they're now pursuing him for $60,000 of rent back payments. Todrick had also said back in July of 2021 that the home had been burglarized and that $50,000 worth of handbags and his personal belongings had been stolen. Todrick even said that he knew who it was that burgled his home, but he didn't want to press charges because he wanted to, quote, take the high road. And obviously a lot of people are a bit confused but also feel like Todrick was effectively lying because it's become clear that he was actually renting this house and never actually bought it, even though that was what the video said. So anyway, there you go. Who knows exactly what's true and what isn't true and whether this is the reason Todrick hasn't appeared on Drag Race in a while. It remains to be seen whether Todrick's career will be affected in the future because of all of this controversy. And just one thing, please remember that this video is just about gossip and drama and it's meant for entertainment purposes. So please don't send Todrick or anyone else mean comments or hate because he's still a person at the end of the day and no one deserves that kind of attention. So please, let's, let's keep it all nice and friendly. As usual, please make sure you like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you liked this video. Currently, less than 7% of people watching are actually subscribed to my channel, which makes me so sad. So please, please just subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notified for my future videos. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me again in the future. Thank you. Bye. Hello and welcome to another video. So today I'm actually going to do another version of a video I've already done. This one is the RuPaul's Drag Race Queens who have hooked up. This video already existed on my channel as a text only video, but recently I've started doing voiceover videos and I've had so many comments, people saying they much prefer the voiceovers. So I've decided that I'm going to recreate some of my previous videos as voiceovers. I'm still gonna keep the text only ones, but this is just a new version. But just to be clear, this is the same content as the previous version of the video, but this one has a voiceover instead. Uh, people have been saying they prefer the voiceover because it's a bit more accessible, they can do other things while listening. Also, some people have difficulty reading the text, whether it's a language barrier or something like that, so they prefer the voice. And I am, of course, a man of the people, so I'm doing this to try and help you out. I hope you enjoy and thank you for watching. So there have been over 150 contestants on RuPaul's Drag Race since it debuted in 2009. The drag world is kind of small, so it's hardly surprising that some of the Drag Race contestants have hooked up, which is known as a Kai Kai. So, here are some RuPaul's Drag Race queens who have kai kai that you may not have known about. Bob the Drag Queen and Ms. Cracker. Bob the Drag Queen competed on season 8 and won. Ms. Cracker competed on season 10 and All Stars 5, placing 5th and runner-up respectively. Bob was actually the one who put Miss Cracker in drag for the first time as part of a marriage equality march, and Bob is also Miss Cracker's drag mother. But what you may not know is that these queens actually hooked up before either of them appeared on Drag Race. In an interview, Bob described how he met Miss Cracker on the streets in New York. Bob was apparently trying to carry a broken bookcase back to his apartment that he saw on the street that he liked, and then this tiny little guy came up to him and asked if he needed help. Bob said that the two of them managed to get the bookcase back to his apartment, and then he said, and then we effed. That tiny little guy that he saw on the street was actually Miss Cracker, and it was before Miss Cracker ever started doing drag, and the two of them hooked up a few more times and have been doing drag together for a long time and the two of them have remained good friends over the years. 
Jinx Monsoon and Magnolia Crawford. Jinx Monsoon competed on season five and won. Magnolia Crawford competed on season six and was the first queen to be eliminated in her group. In an interview, Jinx once said that she met Magnolia in Seattle many years ago before either of them was on Drag Race. At the time, Jinx hadn't fully embraced being a drag queen, so she didn't tell anybody, and Magnolia was also on a hiatus from drag at the time. Jinx said that they ended up sleeping together on their second date, and the SEX was great. Later, Jinx went on to win season five of RuPaul's Drag Race, and then heard that Magnolia was going to be on season six. Jinx said that when she heard Magnolia was going to be on season six, she was excited because she could tell everyone that she had hooked up with a Rue girl. However, she then joked that when she actually saw Magnolia's episode, she decided not to tell anybody, basically making a joke about Magnolia's early elimination. Magnolia's real name is Reynolds Engelhart, and he retired from drag after the show and sees drag as more of a hobby now. Derek Barry and Chanel. Derek competed on season eight and All Stars five, placing fifth and tenth respectively. Chanel competed on season one and All Stars one, placing fourth and third respectively. Both of them have confirmed in interviews that they had a brief relationship for around six months when Derek first moved to Las Vegas. Chanel said that she even painted Derek's first apartment in Las Vegas because she loves interior design and Derek's apartment was really dull and boring. Derek said that Chanel was not really very supportive of her doing drag outside of Britney Spears impersonation and Chanel didn't think that Derek was at the same level as her, which ultimately led to their breakup. Derek also said that she doesn't think it's a good idea for drag queens to date because it causes too much tension, which is kind of ironic and you will find out why now. Derek Barry and Nebraska. Nebraska was a guest on the season five makeover challenge and was paired with Alaska, hence the name. The task was to put military veterans into drag and Nebraska, who was the military veteran, continued to do drag after the show. Nebraska has been in a thruple or three-way relationship with Derek Berry and Nick San Pedro for eight years. Derek had been in a relationship with Nick, who's a painter, not a drag queen, for about seven years before they met in Nebraska and then became a thruple. The three of them have been very supportive about their polyamorous relationship and have, quote, zero regrets. Tace and Ahura. Tace competed on season two of Drag Race UK and placed runner up. Ahura also competed on season two of Drag Race UK and placed fifth. While they were both on the show, they hinted heavily that they had hooked up with each other at some point in the past. They also mentioned on the show that they had moved in together during the lockdown, which further fueled rumours that they were in some kind of relationship. Ahura has admitted that they, quote, amped up their relationship on the show because they knew it would make good TV and it would get them more airtime. However, it appears that the two of them are just friends now, but from what it sounds like, they probably at some point in the, in the past most likely hooked up. Manila Luzon and Sahara Davenport. Manila Luzon competed on season three, All Stars one and All Stars four, placing second, seventh and sixth respectively. Sahara Davenport competed on season two and placed seventh. The two of them were in a relationship until Sahara sadly passed away due to heart failure in 2012. Manila led the tribute to Sahara's life and said she wanted to carry on her legacy. Manila has luckily now found happiness and she got married to her long-term boyfriend Michael in 2017. Bob the Drag Queen and Alexis Michelle. Alexis Michelle competed on season nine and placed fifth. It's been confirmed that Alexis once went on a date with the season eight winner, Bob the Drag Queen. On the date, they apparently ended up watching each other's audition tapes for Drag Race. Sharon Needles and Alaska. 
Sharon Needles competed on season 4 and 1. Alaska competed on season 5 and All Stars 2, placing runner-up and winner respectively. It's very common knowledge that the two of them dated for around four years and broke up in 2013. They were still dating when both of them competed on their respective seasons of Drag Race. Alaska has since said that their relationship was tumultuous at times and that Alaska was really jealous when Sharon got cast on Drag Race before her. However, the two of them have remained friends over the years and they seem to be on very good terms now. So, did any of these Kai Kai surprise you? Did you know about any of these already? Apart from when you watched my last video, obviously. And are there any Kai Kais that were missed out? If so, please comment below. Thank you once again for watching these videos. I hope you like the voiceover and you found this video entertaining. Please let me know what you think of me redoing my old videos as voiceover. And as usual, please don't forget to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe, subscribe, please subscribe, because it really helps. Currently, only about 1% of people watching are actually subscribed, which makes me so sad. So please, please just click that subscribe button. And if you want, ring the bell to get notified for my future videos. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you will join me again for another video in the future. Thank you. Bye. Hello and welcome to another episode of Drag Race News, Gossip and Drama. Today we're going to be talking about something slightly different. Normally we focus on the contestants of Drag Race and all of the drama and secrets that surround them. But today we're going to be focusing on the judges of RuPaul's Drag Race. Now there have been 14 seasons of Drag Race US, three seasons of UK, plus multiple other franchises. So there have been a lot of judges in the Drag Race universe. And there's so much hidden drama and secrets involving a lot of the Drag Race judges. So today we're gonna to be talking about it. Just to make it clear, this video is only gonna focus on the judges that have appeared on the US version of Drag Race. So, here is a video about what happened to these Drag Race judges. Santino Rice. Santino is a fashion designer who competed on the second season of Project Runway and he placed third. He also appeared on a few other shows, for example, he was a judge at the 2006 Miss Universe pageant, and he made a guest appearance on America's Most Smartest Model in 2007. Santino was a judge on Drag Race from 2009 to 2014, spanning from season one to season six. He also made a guest appearance on an episode of season seven. So, the question is, was Santino fired from Drag Race? It's not 100% clear why Santino left Drag Race, and it's also not clear whether he chose to leave or whether he was fired. He's never publicly confirmed why he left. However, in 2015, Santino tweeted saying, Thank you for the outpouring of concern and hashtag love. I am grateful. I manifest the change and evolution of my soul on this earth. All is well. A lot of people have taken the all is well part to mean that there was no drama or anything bad because of him leaving Drag Race, which would imply as though it was an amicable mutual decision, although this was never publicly confirmed. Santino has also, since leaving the show, has never said anything bad about the show. However, there have been a few theories as to why Santino is no longer a judge. Santino's expertise and knowledge is mostly about fashion and not so much about drag. His critiques were often harsh on the show and focused mainly on fashion and garment construction. This was fine for the first few seasons of the show when the fashion and the outfit construction elements were more important, but as the show progressed, it became more about drag and less about necessarily the fashion and the construction element, which meant that perhaps Santino was no longer the best 
fit as a judge because he didn't actually have huge amount of experience or knowledge about drag, it was mainly about fashion. But another reason could simply be that the show just wanted a shake-up and wanted to freshen up the panel by bringing on different people. The fact that Santino was replaced by two funny people, namely comedian Ross Matthews and TV personality Carson Kresley, may suggest that the show just wanted to focus on a slightly more comedic judging panel. Santino hasn't done a huge amount of TV work since Drag Race, but his controversial Twitter statements have come under a huge amount of scrutiny. Santino now promotes a very strict vegan diet and natural remedies, including fasting for over a hundred days, which by the way is not recommended, please do not do it. However, he's also made several controversial statements on Twitter and giving misleading information about the COVID-19 vaccination, and he is an avid anti-vaxxer. Santino tweeted statements such as this one. He said, never get the COVID vaccine, never. You can find a nurse or pharmacist to squirt it on the floor. Generations of humans before you did not need it and you do not need it. Support your immune system naturally. A lot of these statements, by the way, have been debunked, misproven and go against CDC guidelines. In April 2020, Santino said in an interview that his Twitter had been hacked and someone had tweeted based on his draft tweets that he'd saved on his account. However, he continued to make controversial statements on Twitter and in June 2021, one of his tweets received a misinformation label on Twitter. Santino responded by saying, you cannot cancel the truth. As of now, Santino's Twitter appears to have been suspended. It actually sort of appeared as though the show had distanced itself from Santino in recent years, especially given his controversial statements on Twitter. However, in episode 2 of season 14, Maddie Morphosis found a hat in a vat of Tic Tacs during the photo shoot challenge. When she pulled out the hat, Rue said, That is Santino's hat. He's been texting me for years about that hat. It's been in the bowl of Tic Tacs the whole time. This felt a little rehearsed, so I'm assuming this was obviously planned, but it was the first time that Santino has been mentioned on the show for years. Merle Ginsburg. Merle Ginsburg is a fashion writer and TV personality. She was a judge on the show on season one and season two. It's often been joked about on the show about what actually happened to Merle and why she is no longer on the show. For instance, this was actually the subject of an episode of season seven called Rue Hollywood Stories, Whatever Happened to Merle Ginsburg? The episode featured comedic sketches giving different people's accounts of why Merle left the show. So, why did Merle really leave the show? Although no official reason has ever been given, Michelle Visage actually explained the situation in an interview. Michelle said that she was actually supposed to be a judge herself since the start of the show. But her homophobic boss at the radio station she was working at wouldn't let her be on the show because they thought it would be a bad image for the radio station. So Merle was brought on to stand in for Michelle for the first two seasons. Apparently the plan was always that Michelle was going to come into the show once she was out of contract from the radio station and that Merle would leave the show. So although the show always makes jokes about Michelle and Merle feuding and hating each other, it actually appears there's no bad blood between them and it was simply just a contractual thing that was pre-arranged and Merle always knew she was going to be leaving the show after season two. Michelle even said in the interview that Merle is really lovely. And here's some bonus tea that comes from Merle Gimsberg. In an interview, Merle was actually asked about that strange season one hazy filter that was on the entire show. Merle actually said that she never knew anything about the filter until she watched the TV because she was never really involved in the production side of it. 
However, she did say that during filming, RuPaul said to the producer and the camera people, put some more stuff on that lens. The lighting sucks. Pull it back. So this is basically implying that RuPaul didn't really like the way that the lighting was making her look. So that's why they put this weird filter on and it kind of became a bit of a joke about season one. Billy B. Billy B is a makeup artist who served as a guest judge regularly on seasons three and four. Billy B's critiques were often harsh and weren't very well received by the other judges, the contestants, and the fan base as a whole. For example, in the season four, episode six challenge, Float Your Boat, the contestants had to design their own pride float boats. Billy B actually made a joke about the contestant Jiggly Caliente and said that she could, quote, barely fit in the boat. The other guest judge that episode, who was Kelly Osborne, jumped to Jiggly's defence and said, quote, How very dare you, big is beautiful. Billy B also referred to another contestant, Milan, as a, quote, dude in a dress. It's not clear why Billy B left the show. However, some people have said that Santino Rice was always supposed to be the only male judge on the show. But because Santino had scheduling conflicts with another show he was filming, Billy B was brought in just to stand in for Santino in a few episodes. Other people have said that because Billy B's critiques were so harsh and rude, then that's why he was removed from the show. Also, some people have said that Billy B's makeup skills weren't actually very good and he painted Michelle in one of the episodes and also Shangela for the season three finale and both of them didn't really look very good in those episodes and that could be another reason why he was let go from the show. Here's some bonus tea about Billy B. In an interview in 2011, Billy said that when Shangela was on the show, Shangela was often critiqued by Billy and the other judges for um, Shangela's makeup skills. But apparently one time Shangela said, I know you're giving me critiques, I understand them, but I need someone, please can you help me? Billy said that he felt bad because Shangela genuinely looked quite upset and wanted help, but Billy wasn't allowed to help Shangela because it would be seen as unfair to the other contestants. So Billy said a long time after the show, he was actually on a flight to New York and he saw that Shangela was on the flight. So he went up to Shangela and said it was a little bit awkward, but he wanted to sort of break the ice with Shangela and spoke to Shangela. Shangela actually said that um, she was going to New York to film a commercial for Orbitz with Manila Luzon and Carmen Carrera. Billy asked whether Shangela and the girls would be doing their own makeup and Shangela said yes. So Billy said, I'm going to come and do your makeup as a way to sort of make up for his harsh critiques to Shangela during the show. Billy said that while he was doing Shangela's makeup on the set for this Orbitz commercial, he was trying to teach Shangela how to improve her makeup and how to do things to make herself look better because he really wanted to help Shangela not just criticise her. Matthew Anderson Matthew Anderson is a makeup artist and appeared several times on Drag Race as a judge or photographer. Matthew was actually Rue's personal makeup artist until season 9 and then he suddenly disappeared from the show during episode 1. Raven was then brought in to do RuPaul's makeup and has continued to do RuPaul's makeup even into current times. There was no official reason given for Matthew's departure from the show, but several sources have said that Matthew and Rue had a big argument on set during the filming of season 9 episode 1 and Matthew stormed off and that's why he left the show. And apparently this is why Rue's makeup looked quite rough in the episode one of season nine. Other sources have said that Matthew quit the show because he was having some mental health issues and needed time to get away from it and recover. In an interview, season four contestant Willem Belli actually talked about Matthew Anderson and the whole situation. 
Willem said that Matthew was really sick in hospital and had asked RuPaul to go visit him in hospital, but RuPaul hadn't gone to visit him. Willem said that one day he saw RuPaul on the streets in Los Angeles and stopped in his car and shouted at RuPaul and said that Matthew really wanted RuPaul to go and see him. You should go and see him in the hospital. I've seen him. Why haven't you? And apparently RuPaul told Willem to F off. Willem also implied as though RuPaul and the production company is paying for Matthew's treatment in hospital. So it's unclear exactly what the situation is now between Matthew and RuPaul, but it definitely seems as though there was some animosity and that is why Matthew is no longer on the show or involved with the show. Lucian Piani Lucian Piani is a composer and musical producer who worked on several of RuPaul's albums, including Champion and Glamazon. Lucian also appeared several times on the show as a guest judge, especially during the musical challenges. However, Lucian then fell out of favour in 2016 with the show when he started posting controversial and racist statements on Twitter. Lucian also criticised RuPaul, calling RuPaul a sham who only cares about money. Lucian then started posting lots of things on social media that were quite alarming and he looked very unwell and he clearly seemed to be suffering from some kind of mental health issue and he later said that he was suffering the effects of medication he had been taking. Lucian has also been arrested several times, including one time at gunpoint in 2019 for trespassing outside a bank in Los Angeles. So what is Lucian's relationship like with RuPaul now? Although we don't know the situation between RuPaul and Lucian and whether RuPaul reached out to Lucian at any point, in 2016 RuPaul tweeted asking people to have compassion but didn't mention anyone specifically although this has been taken and it's assumed that RuPaul was referring to Lucian and Lucian's mental health issues. Lucian seemed to be getting better and posting on social media about being in recovery, but then Lucian started tweeting or posting on social media lots of very disturbing videos, uh, posting pictures of his bank account statements, asking for money and just generally posting very concerning videos where his mental health did not seem to be in the best of shape. The latest post from Lucian came in on the 6th of January this year where he said happy belated new year I'm alive mania sucks gonna get help. Lucian has in the past tweeted several messages that are similar to this about getting help so I hope that this is a true turnaround for Lucian and that he gets the help he needs. So there you have it. There is some behind the scenes information, news, tea about the judges on RuPaul's Drag Race. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe on this video, share it, and please make sure you subscribe to my channel to help this channel grow and help me make some more Drag Race content. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So All Star 7, the All Winners season, is currently airing and I thought it'd be interesting if I could go through a couple of interesting facts about each of the contestants that you maybe didn't know. So here are some facts about the All Star 7 cast that you may not have known. Please make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for my future videos. Jada Essence Hall Jada Essence Hall won season 12 of Drag Race US. And some of you may not know this, but Jada is actually a very talented designer and seamstress. So for example, for season 12, Jada has said that she actually designed and created every single outfit that she wore for the competition, except her tulle dress. And just as some bonus tea about Jada, 
there's a rumour online based on something that her fellow castmates said. So they said that for season 12, Jada had one week less than everyone else to prepare for season 12. So this has sort of created a rumour that Jada was originally an alternate for season 12, i.e. she wasn't originally supposed to be on season 12, but then someone dropped out, so she filled their space. And this rumour is kind of supported by the fact that Jada, after winning, um, said, quote, I can't believe it, like I was almost not even supposed to be there, which she said in the live reaction video to the season 12 winner video on the RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel. And it's been rumoured that Jada was an alternate um, to replace Tamisha Iman, who eventually appeared on season 13. Um, And Tamisha said on season 13 that she was originally cast for season 12, but couldn't compete because she was receiving cancer treatment. But then multiple sources online have actually confirmed that it was actually Nikki Doll who replaced Tamisha. So therefore, it's not 100% clear who Jada replaced, if at all. Jinx Monsoon. Jinx Monsoon won season five of Drag Race US. So one of the things that one of the trademarks of Jinx is her red hair. And this was shown in her season five promo look. And something that you may not know, Jinx one time during a viewing party spilled some interesting tea and she said that Jinx, the character, is actually blonde. Um, But in her promo picture for season five, she's a redhead. Apparently, the way it happened was producers asked um, everyone to bring dresses and wigs for this goddess theme, which was the season five promo theme. But they hated all of the options that Jinx brought with her. And the producers also felt that they already had quite a lot of blondes in the lineup and also people that were wearing fishtail outfits. So Jinx actually said that the producers ended up styling her themselves and as part of that they gave her this redhead wig and she actually ended up loving the redhead wig so much that that kind of became her go-to colour. Another bit of interesting tea about Jinx is on season five she was quite open and talked about her narcolepsy and Jinx talked a little bit more about this and explained that she told them about it when she was cast and she had to speak to the doctors to make sure that she was physically able to do it but they said it was going to be no problem because she was medicated she would just have to take naps but um, actually Jinx said that her fellow contestant Linacia Sparks was actually really sweet and every time that Jinx would lay down to go for a nap Linacia would come and put a blanket over her also something else that was interesting one of the in one of the confessionals that Jinx did there was this bit where Jinx was talking about narcolepsy and then she fell asleep sort of kind of mid-sentence and the producers had to say to her are you okay now I think a lot of people assumed that maybe that was kind of set up because it seemed almost a bit too convenient but actually Jinx confirmed that that really did happen she did fall asleep during the confessional although Jinx maintains that she did finish her sentence before falling asleep and in the editing they just cut it off to make it look like she fell asleep sleep mid-sentence but she really did fall asleep. Monet Exchange. Monet Exchange competed on season 10 of Drag Race US and then went on to star and then win in All Stars 4 which she won in conjunction with Trinity the Tuck. So Monet once in an interview shared what she called quote the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to me which happened during the filming of season 10. Monet actually said that she peed herself on stage during the ball challenge. Monet said quote I don't think I've ever talked about it but I effing peed myself on stage in front of RuPaul and everyone. They were doing the deliberations and I legit peed on the stage. Monet then adds, I had to walk away and go change. They took me to the bathroom and put on one of those hand dryers and dried my crotch. And this story was also confirmed by Mo Hart, who was also on season 10 with her. Mo said, Monet Exchange peed on the stage in her red costume when she was getting critiqued right before she lip synced against Dusty Ray Bottoms, like a puddle. Literally, she had to go and they were in the middle of the critiques she was shaking and she was like, I gotta go, I gotta go. Raja. Raja won season three of Drag Race US. 
People may not know this, but Raja is actually a talented makeup artist and actually had a really big career in TV before being on Drag Race in 2011. In 2005, Raja actually started to work as the head makeup artist on Tyra Banks' reality show, America's Next Top Model, and she worked on America's Next Top Model from cycles 4 through 12. And her clientele has included many celebrities, including Pamela Anderson, Dita Fontes, and Iggy Azalea. And something else that you might find interesting about Raja. So while Raja was competing on season three, halfway through the season while it was airing, the blogger Perez Hilton actually revealed that Raja was the winner of that season, which caused a lot of uproar from the fans. And Perez Hilton apparently found out because someone who was working on the set of season three leaked it to him. And so, because of this, this is actually what made the show change the way that they filmed the crowning format. So nowadays what they do is they film each of the finalists winning, and then they only find out who actually won on the day when it gets aired. So even the finalists don't know who won because they each film themselves winning. And the reason they do this is because of Raja, not because of her specifically, but when she won, everyone found out about it because they didn't do this, everyone films themselves winning. But it was because of Raja and her season that they started this format. Shea Coulee. Shea Coulee competed on season 9 of Drag Race US and then went on to win All Stars 5. So one of the moments that I think Shea might be remembered for most is during the season 9 reunion episode when Valentina was crying Miss Congeniality, it caused quite a lot of controversy between the other contestants. And at one point, Shay kind of confronted Valentina, and then Valentina said, you don't need to be upset. And then Shay Coulee said, do I look upset? And I think a lot of people were slightly surprised by Shay during the reunion because she definitely seemed a little bit more tense and pressed than she had done during the season. However, it has been revealed that on season 9, they actually filmed the reunion after they filmed the finale, which means that Shay and Trinity knew that they hadn't won the show because they both got knocked out during the first lip sync. And that means that during the reunion, they already knew they didn't win, but they had to kind of pretend as though they were still in the running. So this is perhaps why Shay may have acted that way during the reunion, because she knew that she didn't win. And also, fellow season 9 contestant Pheromone has previously said that the reason that she was a little bit loose-lipped at the reunion is because the producers kept supplying them all with drinks. So perhaps that also had something to do with the fact that there was so much drama at the season 9 reunion. There's also an unsubstantiated rumour that I found online which said that Shay revealed that prior to the season 9 finale, the top four queens were all told that they had to bring outfits that had reveals. But the day before the finale was filmed, two of Shay's outfits were stolen, which is why Shay was the only top four to not do a reveal during the lip sync. However, I couldn't find any corroborating evidence for this, so this may be completely unsubstantiated but I did think it was an interesting rumour and if it's true it would explain why Shay didn't have any kind of reveal during the lip sync. The Vivian. The Vivian won season one of Drag Race UK. The Vivian is one of the hosts of the I Like to Watch UK and during that the Vivian revealed that her hair that she was wearing out of drag on season one of Drag Race UK was actually a toupee. The Vivian has been quite vocal about her hair loss and in November of 2020 she posted on Instagram that she had received a hair transplant. She also said that this was the first time that she had left the house without wearing a hat in 10 years. And in an interview, the Vivian said, quote, The initial investment for Drag Race was life-changing, but the £6,000 I spent on my hair transplant was an even greater investment. And just to give you some context, £6,000 is about 7500 US dollars. 
and the Vivian also revealed that she borrowed £3,000, which is around US$3,700, to pay for all of her outfits in preparation for Season 1 of Drag Race UK. Trinity the Tuck Trinity the Tuck competed on Season 9 of Drag Race US and then went on to win All Stars 4 in conjunction with Monet Exchange. Trinity has actually been spilling lots of tea about All Stars 7 on Twitter. For example, in one tweet, Trinity said, Want more tea? Question mark. While preparing, I was initially told I couldn't do Leslie because a previous cast member on the season that was currently filming, season 14, was going to do Leslie for Snatch Game. Later on, they told me I could bring him just in case and then allowed me to do him. Trinity also said, quote, I had way more jokes with Lucy, including stuff with a burn book, but that got cut, I assume, for copyright issues. And then, some of you may know because of my previous video that Trinity had this kind of controversy a while back, which was they accused her of having a secret Reddit account where she was posting nasty comments and things under the name of She Devil by Night. And someone on Twitter asked whether the Snatch Game character of Lucifer was kind of a backhanded swipe at this rumour. And Trinity said, absolutely, F them, lol. Evie Oddly. Evie Oddly won season 11 of Drag Race US. Some of you may not know this, but Evie is actually the drag mother slash sister of season 14 winner Willow Pill. And this means that Evie and Willow are the first pair from the same family to win Drag Race US in both of their respective seasons. Just as a sidebar, some of you may already know this, but previously the only other winning pair uh, from the same family were Sharon Needles of season 4 and Aquaria of season 10. However, since all of the allegations and controversy about Sharon Needles, Aquaria has distanced herself from Sharon and has kind of said that Sharon is not her drag mother. Willow Pill actually comes from the same Denver-based drag family as Evie Oddly, which means that the two are actually drag mother and daughter or drag sisters, depending on how you look at it. And Willow Pill was actually asked about her relationship with Evie during a season 14 cast interview with Entertainment Weekly. And Willow started laughing when she was asked the question about Evie because Evie was actually sitting in the same room as her off camera. And Willow said that Evie is, quote, a great sister. And apparently she told Willow to, quote, just have fun on Drag Race, live it up, be weird and be bold. And then later in the interview, Evie did come on camera with Willow Pill. So there you go. There were some interesting facts that you may not have known about the cast of All Stars 7. Did you know any of these facts already? And were any of these a surprise to you? If so, let me know in the comments. As usual, please make sure you like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you liked this video. Currently less than 7% of people watching are actually subscribed to my channel, which makes me so sad. So please, please just subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notified for my future videos. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me again in the future. Thank you, bye! Hello everyone and welcome to another video spilling all of the Drag Race tea, gossip and drama. As we all know, Drag Race is a reality TV show which means there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes during production. So today we're going to be spilling the tea about some shocking Drag Race production secrets that you never knew about. Please just click that subscribe button and if you want, ring the bell to get notified for my future videos. Best Judies Drag Race has changed a lot over the years and the format of the show itself is quite different to what it was originally intended to be. Although it's been said by many people, it was actually confirmed in an interview with Season 6's Kelly Mantle that the original concept for the show was it was going to be about drag queens and their best Judies, i.e. their best friends. 
Kelly said that she was offered the first season of Drag Race and the way they pitched it was as a mix between America's Next Top Model and Project Runway. The idea was that each contestant would be allowed to bring a friend who would be a stylist or costume designer slash hair and makeup person with you and you would all be living in a house together. This means that the show itself changed a lot and became the show that we now love today, but it meant that queens like Victoria Porkchop Parker were kind of left in a bad situation because she originally thought that she would be able to bring someone to help sew because she can't really sew herself and that obviously was not the case which is partly why she ended up being eliminated in the first episode. Also with some bonus tea about Kelly Mantle, she also said in an interview that she only got the list of outfits that she had to prepare for the runway six days before they started filming, which she explained is why some of the outfits that she had looked quite simple compared to others, because she didn't have time to get even the most basic of outfits done, let alone get anything bespoke designed. The Confessionals as we all know, each contestant films what are called confessionals, which is when they talk about what's happening on the show and everything out of drag, and these are then interspersed throughout the episodes. What you may not know though is that the confessionals are actually filmed at different times and are used in different places. For example, in my interview with Juicy Couture, who appeared on Drag Race Holland Season 2, she confirmed that even though she was eliminated in the first episode, she actually had to stay and film her confessionals even after she was eliminated because the eliminations are filmed and then confessionals are filmed after each week's worth of episodes. The contestants are actually told to wear the same outfit for their confessionals so that the production can take any snippet they want of the confessional and use it in any part of the episode even if the person wasn't talking about that specific moment when they said it but because they're wearing the same outfit you can't always tell. The reason they introduced this rule was because in the earlier seasons you could tell when they had changed parts of the confessionals and taken it from different points. For example, in one episode in season three, Shangela was talking about one of her fellow contestants, Stacey Lane Matthews, and she was wearing this top that says Hallelujah with corn on it. And then in the very next second, they switch back to the confessional and Shangela is wearing a completely different t-shirt. And when you listen back to it, you can even tell that they've spliced these two parts of different confessionals but tried to make it sound like Shangela was talking about the same thing when in reality these confessionals would have been filmed at completely different times. Eliminations. As we know at the end of each episode at least one queen is asked to sashay away and they then say that they go home after being eliminated although that's not actually always the case. For example, Monet Exchange, who appeared on season 10 and All Stars 4, said during Sibling Rivalry, which is her podcast, that the eliminated queens, for example, Vanjie and Callery, had been eliminated, but none of the queens were allowed to talk to them, but they still had the promo to film, even though technically those queens had been eliminated, they were still there. Whereas Ariel Versace, who appeared on season 11, said that the eliminated queens flew home and then had to fly back to the studio for the makeover challenge. And Ben de la Creme said that during All Stars 3, after her self-elimination, that she was made to stay in her hotel room until the end of the season because the queens had to come back to vote for the winner. Lip Sync Songs as we know, the queens have to prepare a lip sync, especially if you're in the bottom two, and you are given an iPod with the songs on at the beginning of the season. And this is why you can often see queens with a headphone in during Untucked while they're preparing for their lip sync. But what you may not know is that the queens are actually given more songs than there are actual episodes, and they don't always know which song is going to appear when, and sometimes they also throw in fake songs that will never be used 
but it's just so that the queens don't actually know which songs they need to prepare so it's a bit more spontaneous. For example, Reggie B from Drag Race Holland Season 2 said during an interview that I had with her that she was actually given on the iPod around 11 songs, even though there were actually only 8 episodes. And the contestants are usually only told maybe a day or so in advance which song they'll be lip syncing to that week. They do often also change songs at the last minute. For example, when Jinx and Detox during season five had to lip sync, it was originally supposed to be a different song, but they changed it to Malambo number one at the last minute. And I've talked about this in a previous video, but it was basically because production were trying to favor Jinx and give her a song that they thought she could perform better in. But it does prove that they do change lip sync songs very quickly, even if it's just the day before, and the queens are often not given much notice. Gag order. As we know, the queens are not allowed to talk about the season before it's aired or even announce that they are on the show before it's been officially announced. But what you may not also know is that during filming, the queens are actually separated from each other even once they know who's on the show. The queens are often locked in their hotel rooms and are not allowed to talk to any of the other contestants at any point during the filming or when they're not on camera. This is to ensure that any drama that happens is caught on camera and doesn't happen off screen. The reason for this is because during some of the earlier seasons, the queens actually used to meet up in their hotel room and talk to each other and any beef or drama that they had, they kind of resolved that off camera. So then when they'd come in the next day, the producers would say, oh, how are you feeling after your fight with this person? And because they'd already sorted it all and resolved it off camera, it meant it wasn't quite as good drama for the camera. So that's why the producers stopped the contestants talking to each other apart from when they're on camera even when they're for example in the truck going from place to place they're still not supposed to talk to each other under the counter RuPaul and the other judges are often all made up with good hair and makeup looking very glamorous and they sit behind a desk or a counter for the whole of the main stage what you may not know though is that what happens behind the counter it's been rumoured for a long time that RuPaul wears some kind of sweatpants that you can't see from underneath the counter while filming and is not actually in drag for very long. And this was actually proven during an episode of Untucked where you can see RuPaul returning to the main stage wearing some form of sweatpants. This is why Utica during the season 13 roast said, RuPaul, you're such a fashion icon. If you could please stand up for us. RuPaul then flipped Utica off and everyone laughed, but what you may not have realised is the reason they were laughing is because Utica was effectively calling out RuPaul for wearing sweatpants and it's kind of an unspoken truth. Season 8 winner Bob the Drag Queen also confirmed this about the sweatpants and said in an interview once, quote, It is a known fact that RuPaul's dresses are in two chunks. Sometimes she'll work the runway and take off all of her padding and put on some sweatpants and Ugg slippers and walk around the studio. Everyone knows this. RuPaul gets out of drag from the waist down to sit behind the table, which I would do too. Suitcases. The queens apparently have a limit of five suitcases per contestant that they're allowed to bring with them. This might sound like a lot, but to fit in multiple and elaborate costumes as well as wigs, makeup and anything else, this isn't actually that much. However, this doesn't seem to be true for every franchise. For example, Envy Peru, who was the winner of Drag Race Holland season one, said that for their season, all of the queens were allowed to fill an entire truck with all of their outfits, uh, which seems very different to the five suitcase limit that the US queens have, which could explain why some of the people from Drag Race Holland had really elaborate outfits and were able to bring them to the show because they didn't have to fit them all in a suitcase. Double take on the runway. It's been confirmed by multiple queens that they walk the runway twice, once with music and once without music, so that the judges can record their funny little jokes and quips during the silent runway walk. They also do this to ensure that they can film the runway from multiple angles to always get the best shot. But this does mean that the contestants can hear the judges' funny quips during the time when they're walking the runway without music. 
For example, on season seven, Ginger Minge said during an episode of Untucked that she could hear the judges making jokes, for example, when Ross said that she looked like, quote, the other white leather. It's also been confirmed that any of the musicals or musical numbers are also filmed more than once to make sure that they get a good take. For example, Katia said that during All Stars 2, they filmed Read You Wrote You twice. For example, Katia said that in one of the takes, she dropped the fan that she was holding, but they actually ended up not using that part of the take and they didn't show her dropping the fan. The other reason this seems surprising is because if they do multiple takes, but they still show one of the queens messing up and going wrong, they must have had a take where they didn't do that, but decided to show the bad take. And then other times they seem to use the good take. Who's the winner? As you know, at the end of each season, one queen is crowned the winner. What you may not know though, is that each finalist is actually filmed being the winner. And so that way, none of the finalists actually know who is the winner of the season until they watch it on TV. So the audience and the drag queen contestants themselves find out who won at the same time. The reason they do it this way is to stop any leaks from happening as to who won because this happened in one of the previous seasons when Raja won and everyone knew about it. For example, Bianca Del Rio said during an interview that during the season 6 finale they filmed each of the three finalists winning and they also filmed a tie between Bianca and Adore which Bianca said she felt bad about because it was clearly obvious that Courtney was not going to win because they didn't film a tie with her, they only filmed it with Adore and Bianca. This is why they're able to film the reactions of the finalists finding out who they, who actually won because none of them actually know because they all film themselves winning and they only find out when the episode airs on TV. And the same also goes for the top four. For example, Bob the Dry Queen once said in an interview that during the season eight finale, they actually filmed Bob losing and being eliminated from the top four, i.e. not getting into the finale, even though she actually eventually did, but they filmed each contestant being eliminated so that none of them know who actually got into the finale until the episode airs. So there you have it. There are some interesting production behind the scenes secrets that you may not have known. Were there any that you think should have been included and weren't? If so, please comment below. And as usual, please don't forget to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe, subscribe, please subscribe because it really helps. Currently, only about 1% of people watching are actually subscribed, which makes me so sad. So please, please just click that subscribe button. And if you want, ring the bell to get notified for my future videos. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you will join me again for another video in the future. Thank you. Bye.